The concern about homegrown terrorism has taken an alarming twist today, with death threats being made against a Sydney Muslim leader who spoke out against Australian radicals. Dr Jamal Rifi and his family have been forced to take extra security measures in response to online threats that were posted on Twitter. Muslim community leaders say combating radicalism in the community is harder than ever, in part because of the power of social media. Emily Burke has our report. The fight against radical Islam has become personal and potentially dangerous for Sydney doctor Jamal Rifi. Having publicly denounced Australian terrorists Khalid Sharouf and Mohammed Elamar, Dr Rifi and his family have been the target of threats from a Twitter account. They labelled me as a Habashi dog and in their own twisted ideology that mean I am outside of the Islamic fold and my killing is, is permissible. Are you alarmed by the threats? Look, to be honest, I am alert, but definitely not alarmed. But I'm taking that threat very seriously because I can take care of myself. I can take precaution. But when it involves my kids, I need to ensure their safety and security. The Reefy family has taken extra precautions based on a security assessment by police. But counter-terrorism experts are among those who are concerned that the online glorification of extremists is inspiring impressionable youngsters who are already on the outer. Deputy Commissioner of New South Wales Police, Nick Caldas. It's something that's on everyone's radar and you will never be able to do away with that threat. And we've seen many instances, particularly in the US for instance, if somebody's inclined to sit by themselves in a home or a unit, get on the internet and work out how to do bombings and how to plant things and how to put together uh, explosive devices and then he goes and does it without discussing it with anyone, obviously that's that's very, very difficult to detect. The, the biggest threat we face, I think, in, in terms of terrorism is complacency. The biggest change has been is that the conflict zones in places in the Middle East seem to be more frequent and more accessible and perhaps through social media such as Twitter, uh, Facebook and so on, much more visible to, to the naked eye. And if they are more visible, they're likely to attract more people's attention and not everyone who's attracted to look is thinking logical thoughts sometimes. Dr Jamal Rifi again. One radical is a one radical too many. We have worked tirelessly over the last couple of years about immunizing our kids from zoos damaging ideas and radicalization and I think we have done a pretty good job. Nevertheless we can't actually police every kid what happened at their home in front of their computers. Is it harder now than it was say in the post 9-11 era in the immediate aftermath? It is much harder now with the proliferation of the social media and internet but we need to see it as a battle of ideology and it is in our best interest as Muslim not to allow these people to hijack our religion. The head of the Imams Council, Professor Ibrahim Abu Muhammad, spoke to the ABC's Late Line program. These people should be re-educated. We are working on this. We have methods that work on the correction of their ideas. We try to cure them. Our educators are young men who are native speakers, who are born here and who are specialized in this field. And he says those who do engage with militants overseas shouldn't be banned from coming home. If we do, we are transforming them from possible terrorists to genuine terrorists. We should absorb them, rehabilitate them, re-educate them. We should not deny them entry as they will regroup elsewhere. If that happens, we are not fighting terrorism, but shifting it to another place. But from a policing perspective, Deputy Commissioner of New South Wales Police, Nick Caldas, says the many outreach programs already up and running can't work in isolation. The online is, is more problematic in that it's almost invisible. It, we cannot be all knowing or seeing, and that's where the community comes in. And you're right, maybe we are traditional, but we're certainly doing a whole lot more than we were perhaps 20 years ago. The bottom line is, if somebody's going to get on the internet and read inappropriate material and engage in inappropriate discussions which may or may not lead to violence. The best source of, of opposing that and stopping it is his own family and the community. We would ask all parents to be aware of what their kids are doing. I know they want to lock themselves in a room. If you've got a teenage son or a, a, someone in their early 20s who's living under your roof, I'd suggest you've got an obligation to at least talk to them about what they're doing and be aware of what business they're conducting behind the closed door. Prevent 
Prevention might be better than cure, but who's responsible when radicals go overseas and then want to come home? I think we're all responsible. The community has a great ownership in this. The police at state level do, the government at state level does, as well as, obviously, our federal colleagues and the federal government. We've all got a hand in this, and it's got to be all shoulders to the wheel. That's the Deputy Police Commissioner of New South Wales, Nick Caldas, speaking there to Emily Burke. Yeah.